Good afternoon. We are now at Matthew chapter 13. And it's been a weekly Bible study that we have continued in spite of the coronavirus lockdown, the circuit breaker. So Father, we thank you once again for this privilege of studying your word. We thank you, Lord, for your word preserved for us. And we ask this day that you will grant us open ears that we may hear from you, open hearts that we may receive from you, Lord, all that you have in store for us. So continue to reveal your truth for our edification. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, we are still at this section. Um, the second section is on the screen. You see where the King, King Jesus was resisted. We have done chapters 11, 12, and now 13. And here in chapter 13, we find um, this is a very, we find that this is a very key chapter even in the study of the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus and also for the Bible. This Matthew, um, the, the book of Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew is actually a very key uh, a book in the Bible because it links the Old Testament to the New Testament. After 400 years of silence. And then when you look into this book, there is one particular chapter which is key. And this is the chapter 13 which we are looking at today. It is key to the Gospel of Matthew. In this chapter, you will find that, the, that our Lord Jesus spoke and taught about the kingdom parables. And all these parables that he shared and he taught to his disciples related to the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. But it was for a period, it was a period going forth, not then as when he was with the disciples, but it was for a period going forth. And when is this period? This is the period after he has been rejected and Jesus Christ has gone to the cross and went back to, to the Father until he shall return again, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to establish his kingdom here on earth. And these parables relate to that period. Now, if you remember when we did a study of Daniel, there was this timeline which I showed then and if you look, you follow the mouse and you see this was, I mean, we are now in this uh, period of grace where our Lord Jesus uh, came in, in, the, in, in Nazareth, no, in Bethlehem, and then he was uh, in the ministry as we have studied the last 12 chapters. But he is now heading towards Jerusalem to fulfill that which God has sent him to do. And you will see, looking at that timeline, at this point, at this point, after he has gone to Calvary, he shall be cut off, the Messiah shall be cut off. And from then, um, Jesus, on the third day, God raised him up, then he appeared himself uh, to his disciples, and then... He was taken back. He went back to be with God the Father. We saw that in Acts. And he remained away until, and he will remain away until the end of the tribulation. If you follow the timeline, the mouse uh, on the timeline, and this period includes the church age, because after he has left, it is for the disciples to now turn the world right side up and then the world, the, the Gentiles would, 
were, were, were evangelized, the church age, and we have the seven-year tribulation before our Lord Jesus, Jesus shall come again, the second coming to establish His kingdom on earth, the millennium uh, S on the diagram. So, what Jesus was presenting to the disciples here in chapter 13 were parables, seven parables, which relate to this period that the Jews might be aware, that they might have knowledge. But then again, he spoke in parables. But parables are for those uh, who believe to reveal to them. But for those who are unbelieving, it will be concealed from them. We will go into more details shortly. And so that those who are learned and who, who are following Christ and believing, they will know the sign of the times. So, back to the slide that I, I showed earlier. So Matthew is the key to the key gospel to the Bible. Matthew 13 is key to the gospel of Matthew. So the kingdom of heaven, it, it is referring to the kingdom of heaven during the interval between the suffering and glory of Christ revealed through parables. And number four, it is also this section is also known as the mystery parables discourse. What is mystery? Mystery is at one time it was concealed. Nobody knew, but now it is revealed to the disciples. Whatever was prophesied by the Old Testament prophets remained a mystery, but now revealed to the disciples. So in this chapter 13, we have the mystery, parables, discourse. The parables, as I mentioned with the diagram of, uh, from the study of uh, Daniel, the parables of the kingdom of heaven to show the direction of the kingdom after Israel's rejection of it, until the King, our Lord Jesus, returns to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. So as per the diagram, after the Messiah was cut off until the end of the tribulation, and all these parables here are referring to that period. So, looking at the next one, so far, so far we have uh, studied um, the Sermon on the Mount. In fact, there are a total of three major discourses in Matthew. Uh, some uh, commentators, scholars uh, would number five. I mean, they would break down something else. Uh, but here we are, we are looking at three. Uh, Sermon on the Mount was the first one from Matthew chapter 5 to 7, which we have completed. And then we are now looking at the mystery parables discourse, Matthew chapter 13. And finally, which will be towards the last part of this book, uh, in Matthew's, uh, Matthew chapter 24 to 25, we have the Olivet discourse where Jesus gave that sermon on the Mount of Olives about the last days. So let's begin with chapter 13. So here we do have uh, some very uh, familiar parables and we are going to study in detail uh, for each and every one of them. Now, the first one is the parable of the sower. So verse 1, On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Now all this while, if you have been following with us, uh, chapters 11, chapter 12, and so on, he was in the house. And he was answering and addressing uh, those questions even when posed to him by the Pharisees. And we ended chapter 12 when he established the new spiritual family which belongs, which comprises those who do the will 
of the Father. And they are all His family. And we are brothers and sisters in Christ. So, here in chapter 13, we will find that Jesus is a master communicator. And by using parables, He is using very um, natural events, natural story to illustrate spiritual truth. Using uh, earthly things to illustrate uh, heavenly principles or heavenly truth. So on the same day as he has finished, you see he did not have rest. He was quite occupied. And on the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Now you know uh, in the Bible, when you come across the word sea, it is a picture of Gentiles, of the nations. So just bear that in mind. He went out of the house, which is a picture of Israel. He was in there answering the Pharisees before this in chapter 12, in chapter 11. Now he left the house. So he left the house of Israel and he turned to the sea. He turned to the Gentiles, the sea of Gentiles. So we have the, he's pointing to the age of the church the time of the Gentiles. Verse 2. And great multitudes were gathered to him so that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. So if you can imagine with me, he went out and then there were so many people crowded around him, approached him. Of course, they were curious. Some, of course, uh, others who are in need of uh, the touch from the Master, they wanted some more teaching, they wanted healing. And our Lord Jesus went to the shore and he got into a boat and he pushed himself a little bit off the shore and he said, And why did he do that? Why did he do that? He was creating the natural amphitheater. Those who have been with us to Israel, uh, we have been, I brought you to the shore I brought, and, and explained to you, uh, you know, those days they don't have amplifiers, they do not have loudspeakers and microphones and all the multi-million dollar uh, systems that we have today. And so our Lord Jesus, He is the Word and He was there at the beginning. He is the Creator. So He surely knows how to make use of the elements of nature in order to create something for his purpose. So by moving a bit off the shore, there, as he spoke from the boat onto the land, onto the shore where the people gathered. Now, on the day, I mean during the day, heat, there is heat and heat rises. But there is also a breeze a breeze that blows inland from the sea and blows inland. So, when he spoke from the boat, the, his, the sound waves, uh, they, they are raised sort of by the heat. And then the incoming wind from the sea blows these sound waves inshore, inland, towards the people, so that those on the shore can hear him clearly without any electronic amplification. It is natural. And those of us who were there, uh, we could be tested and we could hear. Whoever stands on the shore, the sound travels from the boat over the, the water, the, the heat raised them. And then the wind blows these sound waves inland. And they could hear. So, that is the natural amphitheater. And so that the crowd could get um, very good acoustic. Verse 3. Then he spoke many things to them in parables. And mind you, he spoke without a microphone without amplifier and he spoke many things to them in parables saying 
And this is the first parable. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no debt in, of earth. They had no debt of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I'm sure this parable is familiar to quite a number of you. Now, in total, he spoke seven parables and of which he only interpreted two. And this is one of the two parables that he interpreted. And this interpretation can be found from verse 18 to verse 23. So when we get to verse 18, to 23, I will elaborate a bit more. But for now, I let me just say a few words about this. Um, he spoke to them in parables, verse 3. Para. Para means to cast alongside. To bring a parallel. Something that this lay people, because they're mostly agricultural people, they're either farmers or they're fishermen. And so to bring all this daily familiar uh, uh, illustrations that they can associate with, that is easier for their comprehension. So he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower, and later we will know that this is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. A picture pointing to our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus was laying the foundation for their understanding, for their learning, even as he began with the first parable. He went out to sow, and as he sowed, and of course he sowed, uh, the seeds in a field, and the field is a picture of the world. And as he sowed, some seed, and seed, I mean, we don't need rocket science, we know the seed is the word of God, it is the gospel, it is the good news. And some seed fell by the wayside. So in all, we see that there are four. One uh, is the wayside, Another is a stony place. Another uh, is about falling in amongst the thorns. And the last one falling on good ground. So, even as this, in verse 4, as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And, you know, in a field, there would be a path for walking. And so the path for walking it's uh, harder, definitely, than, than that of the soil. Or it could be a path cutting across the field. Still, regardless, the, the ground of the walkway of the path, they are hard. And even as the farmer throws the seed, sow the seed, some will inevitably fall onto the pathways, onto the wayside. And then the birds, and we know the birds, um, as we have seen in uh, verse 19 of the last chapter. Verse 19 of the last chapter, and we know it is a picture. No, which? No. And, and okay, anyway, in the Bible, birds. Uh, it's a picture of evil. And uh, in this case, it is so later when we, we get to uh, verse 18 to 23, we will look a bit more into that. 
And all the and the birds came and devoured them. So before we go further, let's look at a couple of verses. We look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, earlier I mentioned that the parables were spoken so that those who are believing will understand, but those who are not will not. And Jesus, and that's why Jesus delivered the way he did. So to these multitudes, he gave to them in parables. And Paul also wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we, we have the mind of Christ. So, it is targeted. It is targeted for those who believe to understand. Later, he will explain to the disciples, but he did not explain to the multitudes. So, we go on. Verse... Where are we? Okay, verse 5. Some fell on stony places. Now, stony places are, if you look at some, some uh, fields or some grounds, um, they are grainy, they are full of pebbles and so on. But it also tells us these places, uh, the layer of soil is very thin. So as what Jesus said, where they did not have much earth. And so even as the seed, uh, were sown in them, they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth, did not take root, very shallow, so they sprang up quite fast. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And the third one, and some fell amongst thorns, thorns, very choked up. And the thorns sprang up and choked them, choked the seeds. So it's very crowded. It is occupying a lot, a lot occupying a, a limited space. And in verse 8, But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some 34, and that is a lot because even in a good field with good soil, as in this verse 8, a typical harvest would bring between 5 to 15 fold of whatever is sown. 5 to 15. But here we see Jesus proclaiming that it will be a hundred fold. For some 60 and for some is 30. I'll explain further later. And in verse 9, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what God is Jesus is saying, pay attention, this is very important. Listen and understand. So we look at Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Mark chapter 4, verse 13. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? So what Jesus was saying, the parallel uh, was explained, I mean, was uh, written here by Mark in Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Do you not understand this parable? So it is key in order to understand the rest of the Bibles that of the parables that Jesus had for them, they must first understand this. This is the basic. This is the foundation. So it is key. It is important that they understand this parable. Then you will understand all the other parables. The other one, 
it's Luke chapter 8. So again, I will explain that and when we come to verse 18. So Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Let me read from verse 17. Luke chapter 8. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. And he was talking to the disciples. Therefore, take heed how you hear. And this is the key verse. Take heed how you hear. For some, it is, they, I mean, they listen. It goes in one year, it goes out the other year. There is no retention, there is no comprehension. So the key word here is, therefore, take heed, pay attention to how you hear. You must discern and you must capture the essence of it. For whoever has to him, more will be given. If you thirst and you hunger for understanding, more will be given to you. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, means he may not have, he apparently has, or he professed to have, or behave as if he knows, what he seems to have will be taken from him. So that is also a good timely reminder for us. So let's move to verse 10. So bear in mind, the same, the same exposure is given to all the soils. The same seed is given to all the soil. And you will learn as we go along, it got nothing to do with the seed. The same seed is given to all the soils. It is the soil. It is the heart issue. It is how the heart had received the word, received the seed. So the soil is the problem. The heart is the issue. Now we go on to verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, Now, and the disciples came to him. Now, between verse 9 and 10, they were no longer by the shore. It, from, verse 9 to, no, from verse 3 to verse 9, or verse 2 to verse 9, they were out in the open by the shore. Jesus was in the boat and they were, he was addressing the multitudes. But now, in verse 10, the multitudes had dispersed. And it's only the disciples with him. And you can see this in Mark chapter 4, verse 10. Mark chapter 4, verse 10. Because the disciples were, were not of understanding. So, in verse 10, But when he was alone, before this, they were, as it was, we studied in Matthew, the parable of the sower was made known, was told to the multitudes. You look at chapter 4 verse 1. And so now we come to Mark chapter 4 verse 10. But when he was alone, no more multitudes, and those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, so we go back, we go back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, So Jesus was with his disciples only. And these disciples have got, well, we must credit them, they got receptive hearts and they had the desire to learn. So they came to Jesus and they asked Jesus, why do you speak to them, the multitudes, the non-disciples? Why do you speak to them in parables? As I mentioned earlier, to conceal from the unreceptives and to reveal to those who are receptive. Anyway, the answer is in verse 11. Jesus answered, verse 11, He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries, of the kingdom of heaven but to them it has not been given 
So, to you, the disciples who follow Jesus and who are who have the desire to know more, it has been given to you to know the mysteries. What are the mysteries? These were things concealed in the past. In fact, God's future rule had begun with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Future rule, whatever God has in place for the future, it, it, start, it started uh, with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But all this first were prophesied in the Old Testament by the many prophets which we have studied in the years past. And all this, though the prophets prophesied, but they were not, I mean, it was still secret to them. They, they did not fully comprehend. But now it is revealed. It is revealed to the disciples that they know. So, verse 12. For whoever has to him, more will be given. So whoever had received and responded accordingly, more will be given to him. And he will have abundance. But whoever does not have Whoever does not receive, does not retain it, does not respond to it, does not treasure it, even what he has will be taken away from him. So instead of having spiritual progress, this person will be having spiritual regress. But remember, they all had the same exposure. The same seed was sown, the same word was given to them. But some will receive and respond and have progress. Some will not receive, not respond and so will have regress. Therefore I speak to them in parables. Because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear. Nor do they understand. But we must always remember that if you want and you desire to know more, you will be rewarded. But if you choose not to, you have no desire for the Word of God, no love for the Word of God, don't want to read, don't want to study, then you have not. But for those of us who have that desire, more will be given to us. Verse 14, And in them, and in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, and Jesus was quoting Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, telling the disciples, and in these multitudes, these unbelieving multitudes, they, they are only following me because they are curious and they want to see the signs and the wonders and they want to be ministered, but they did not give their heart to Jesus. And so in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. And what did Isaiah write in the years earlier? Hearing, you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing, you will see and not perceive. This means that every possible means, every possible opportunity was given to the people of Israel. For them to hear. And hearing, they will hear. They will get to hear. And we know from the major prophets to the minor prophets which we studied, the word released through the prophets were released to the whole nation. I mean the whole nation. The, both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. But they didn't want to hear. And they remained spiritually dull. That's why they will hear and shall not understand because they chose to be. They rejected God. They turned their backs to Him. And they persisted in idolatry and everything that was not pleasing to God. And so they were spiritually dull. They did not understand. And seeing, you will see. And so they will see miracles. They will see the wonders of God and, and His hand upon each and every part of the life of Israel. They will see. 
but they will not perceive. And seeing, you will see and not perceive. Verse 15. Anyway, let me refer again verse 14. Jesus also refer this, it, since it is being fulfilled in them, in the multitudes who, who just heard him on the shores, these people who were curious all the way, they have heard my teaching. They didn't understand. They have seen the miracles. They did not perceive. Not only their forefathers of the years past, but also them. So it's also relevant for them because in them, the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled. Verse 15, For the hearts of these people have grown down. So again, it is a heart issue. It's a matter of the heart. The heart to perceive, the heart to receive. They didn't. So they have grown down. And what about hearing? Their ears are hard of hearing. Not that they are deaf, but they are just not listening they are not receiving, they are not perceiving. And their eyes, they have closed. And their eyes, they have closed. That means it was a choice of action on their part. They chose to close, not physically, but spiritually. They chose to be spiritually blind. Because they chose to reject God. And the last part of verse 15, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. You see, they, they shut their eyes and they shut their ears because they don't want to see and they don't want to hear. Lest they open their eyes and they open their ears and then they get to see and then they get to hear, then they get to understand and they get to perceive. They don't want, they didn't want lest they should understand with their hearts and turn. They don't want to understand. In case they, they, they should understand, no, so they don't want. So they don't open their hearts, they don't open their eyes, they don't open their ears because they don't want to see, they don't want to hear, they don't want to understand. Because they fear that should they understand with their hearts, then they will turn, they will turn from their ways and they turn back to God. They don't want so that I should heal them. So they also didn't want to be healed. They know they were in a terrible condition, or maybe they didn't know, but whatever it is, they didn't want to be healed. They didn't want to change from what they were doing. They preferred to stay in their course, in their direction, where they were, whatever uh, it was, wherever it was leading them. But you know, God, Jesus, will not force them. So, they don't want to see, they don't get to see, they don't want to hear, they don't get to hear, they don't want to understand, they won't get to understand. Verse 16, But blessed are your eyes for they see. So blessed are your eyes. Referring to who? To the disciples who were with him now. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. So blessed are you also, all you Bible students who have this desire and week in, week out, day in, day out, you have that desire. So we look at Luke 24. Luke 24 verse 45. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he opened their understanding. If you have the desire, I know some things in the Bible, they are a bit hidden, a bit uh, complex. And who opened understanding? Our Lord Jesus. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. So first, you must have the desire, you must align yourself with the Lord. And blessed are you, your eyes shall be opened, you shall see, and your ears you will hear. Verse 17, 
For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men, and Jesus is referring to these great servants of the Old Testament, what they had in the past was just visions. What they had was vision. They only saw visions or they received word from God and so they pen it down and they told it to the people. But they were only they were only given that glimpse of the future. So I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see, what you disciples are seeing, you are seeing me. The Old Testament prophets were only prophesizing that I will be born in Bethlehem, that I will be riding on a donkey into Jerusalem, that I will be pierced, and so on and so forth. But you are seeing. You are seeing what they did not see. You are blessed. You are privileged. So, let me read again. For I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it. And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. For them it was a mystery. For you it has been revealed. That's why this is known, this section here is known as the mystery. What did I say just now? The mystery parables discourse. So let's look at a couple of verses. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. Because God has his timetable. So in Galatians chapter 4, Paul wrote, But when the fullness of the time has come, God sent forth His Son. Like we look at the, the timeline just now from the study of Daniel. When the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. For the Old Testament prophets and righteous men, they could only prophesy. But did they know the time? No. It was after them, much more, much longer after them. They did not get to see. But you get to see. All according to God's time, when the fullness of the time had come. One more, Hebrews 11. Verse 39. And all this, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. And this Hebrew 11 is the hall of faith. Talking about all these people, heroes of the past, the faith that they had in God, as God appointed and assign them and they faithfully adhere to the will of God. And so we have learned all these uh, heroes in, in chapter 11 and the prophets as well. And in verse 39, all these heroes and all these faithful men of the past, having obtained a good testimony through faith, and the father of all was, father of faith of all, was Abraham. They did not receive the promise. So whatever was spoken to them, given to them, uh, given to them in visions as well, they did not receive the promise. But we are blessed. The disciples, those that were in front of Jesus then, they were blessed. Verse 40, God having provided something better for us. Who are the us? The church. The church. Followers of Jesus Christ, God having provided something for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So today, together, they, I mean, whatever they were given in the Old Testament of prophecies, plus whatever we have together, together it shall be perfect. It is perfect that they should not be made perfect. So on the prophecies alone, it was imperfect. But 
now with us, with what was revealed to us in the New Testament and even in the person of Jesus Christ and of the things to come in the days ahead, this will be made perfect all in God's time. So, back to Matthew chapter 13. So now, we are done with uh, chapter, we, no, we are done with uh, verse 17. Now we come to verse 18 of Matthew chapter 13. And this is what we have been waiting for, the explanation. Because I assure you that the disciples, together with the multitudes, when they heard this on the shores, uh, when Jesus spoke from the boat, they did not understand. So now Jesus explained the four kinds of hearers. He explained the parable of the sower. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower, which was from verse 3 to verse 9. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. So Jesus was just explaining, laying the foundation. First, we must all understand. When someone hears the word of the kingdom, hears the word of God and does not understand, does not understand it in his heart, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. Take it away. So with that understanding, then he went on to explain the parable of the sower. Verse, still in verse 19, This is he who received seed by the wayside. So if you remember in verse 4 we read, And as he sowed, the sower sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Some fell on the soil, but some fell on the wayside. But the focus now is the seed that fell on the wayside. So the wayside, as I mentioned earlier, is hard ground. It's hard. So the seed will not take root. It's just a path for walking. So this is, a, this is he who receives seed. So reading from verse 19 earlier, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, and the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart, then you will be able to conclude that this seed is actually the word of God. It is the word of the kingdom. It is the gospel. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. And he was referring to the hard-hearted people, the seed that fell onto the hearts, the hardened hearts of the Pharisees and the scribes. And whatever fell upon them, they rejected. They saw the miracles that Jesus did and they rejected. They heard what he taught and they rejected. And they just went on plotting his death. So, the first kind of hearer has a hardened heart. So we're looking at the hardened heart hearer. Verse 20. But he who received the seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So we look back to verse 5. Some fell on stony places. As mentioned earlier, stony places do not have a thick layer of soil, very shallow. So where they did not have much earth, 
and they immediately sprang up because they had no net. So when it gets hot, when the sun is up, but when the sun was up, they were scorched. They get burned, sunburned. And people who are not deeply rooted, they got no roots. They, are, they have no roots in Christ. They are not standing on the foundation of Christ. And so when issues come upon them, challenges come upon them, it gets so heated up, it gets so hot. They were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And that means death. Physical death, but more likely spiritual death. So, they withered away. So back to verse 20. But he who received the seed on stony ground. So these are very, um, as mentioned, these are places with very shallow layers of, of, of soil. So earlier we have the hardened heart. So here we have the shallow heart. The shallow heart hearer. And it's a very emotional response. Oh, hallelujah. Wow, praise the Lord. I receive Christ. And, and they're happy for a while. Until they hit the wall. Until they meet the next crisis. And that's when they fall away. So, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Tears of joy. And they are like fireworks, you know. On National Day, you see the fireworks. They get shot up into the sky and they blow up and they sparkle and it's so bright. But in a short while, the sky is dark again. They have burned out. Yet, he has no root in himself. He speaks of a person who has no relationship with Christ. And it is said, but endures only for a while. But for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, because he is challenged whether he has to stand for the faith, stand for Christ. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of Christ, because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So, not the ideal hearer. So we have a hardened heart, we have a shallow heart. So what else do we have? Verse 22. Now when, now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So this third person, I would describe him as a crowded heart. His heart was preoccupied with so many things of the world. And these are thorns. These are taking up much of his life. And it, it is uncomfortable. And this is what we just read. These are riches. And these riches are deceitful. Why deceitful? Because riches do not deliver what they promise. Many assume that riches will bring them happiness. Not true. Bring them joy. Not true. Bring them satisfaction. Not true. And we have seen many unhappy rich people. And so all this richness are deceitful. Now he who receives seed amongst the thorns is he who hears the word and cares of this world. And the deceitful of riches choke the word. So all this occupy his space, occupy his mind, occupy his time. And he becomes unfruitful, unfruitful for the things of God. So we look at verse 7. And some fell among thorns, amongst thorns. And Jeremiah has something to say about these thorns. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fellow ground 
and do not sow among thorns. Even Jeremiah of old, through from I mean from God, told the people, break up your ground, but do not sow amongst thorns because they are going to be unfruitful for you. So some fell among the thorns in verse 7, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. So now we go on to the fourth listener. The fourth listener, but he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirty. So this is speaking of a fruitful heart hearer. So we have a hardened heart hearer, we have a shallow heart hearer, we have a crowded heart hearer, and now we have a fruitful heart hearer. And this is the believer. It fell on good ground. And he hears the word and understands it. He hears the word and he understands it. And we studied earlier, the person must first have the desire. And when you have the desire and you pursue, and as we studied in Psalm chapter 1 verse 3, in Psalm chapter 1 verse 3, I think, you know, you meditate on the word day and night. Even in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, meditate on the word day and night. And when you have the desire and the hunger and you pursue after that, after it, God will give you understanding. He will open up your mind. And so you will have more understanding. And that is a fruitful heart who indeed bears fruit. So, he not only hears and understands, but in turn, he bears fruit. He is fruitful. He multiplies and produces some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirty. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a typical harvest can give a farmer 5 to 15 fold. But on the average, it can be 1 to 8. So, uh, if you plant a seed, you can get about 8 grains, thereabouts. But here, produce some a uh, hundredfold. Now, what is hundredfold? Hundredfold is one is ten thousand percent. Ten thousand percent. Whatever investment, if you can get a thousand ten thousand percent, please grab some sixty four. Sixty four means six thousand percent. Some thirty, three thousand percent. Three thousand percent. 34, 30 times 100 percent. You get 3,000 percent. And that's a lot. It speaks of one who has received, one who has hears the word, understands it, and go forth and multiply because he has a fruitful heart. And so, even as we receive the gospel, we are to go forth and to spread the gospel. Our, our job, our preoccupation, our vocation is to sow the gospel. So, we have finished with the explanation of this parable, the first parable, the parable of the sower. And we will pause here.